Today's beer is Sam Adams Cherry Wheat. Whoops. There we go. Okay, let's see how this looks. Okay. Looks pretty, pretty decent. And there it is. Hmm, not a bad looking beer. Let's zoom in on that sucker. Action. What up world? It's Tony Recluse and you are on my vlog. Vlog number 18. And today's beer is Sam Adams Cherry Wheat. I know I've been on a run of cherry, uh, Sam Adams lately, but um, yeah, I'm going to change it up tomorrow. Why not? So I'm trying to do is like, I was going to do like one for every day and well, I worked a double yesterday, so that didn't happen. They kind of frown upon it when you start trying to do a blog or something on the side while you're dealing with customers. Like, hold on, hold on, I'm busy right now. You know, if that doesn't fly. So let's try this cherry wheat. You could actually smell the cherry when you when you put it up to your mouth, which is kind of cool. And it's definitely a hint of there is it's more than a hint of cherry. It is really cherry. It's like it's like cherry coke for lager. That's the best way I could put it. So if you like cherry flavoring, it's pretty good. It's pretty decent, yeah. So let's begin. Um so uh, t today I noticed that uh, in, in Texas they've got the open and carry law uh, now, which which is fine. But uh, what kind of struck me about it was seeing a picture uh, from on Facebook. There's a guy in a deli, and I, I guess it's just the way New York Times framed the picture, which makes it look kind of obnoxious to me. There's a guy in a deli, and it's just a picture of his back, and he's got like an assault rifle hanging from his back, right? And there's a, per a woman holding a baby right behind that person. And it just looks obnoxious to me. You know, and it's like, okay, I get it. Open and carry. Do you really need to bring an assault rifle into the deli? Do you really, really? You know, I mean, that's just... I, I like... That's why I like the whole con conceal and carry. It's just that it's not so in your face, you know. Uh, we, we have a conceal and carry law in Florida, which, which is fine with me. Um, I know that when probably among the numbers of customers I have, some of them have carry, conceal and carry. Some of them um, have used that as identification. Fine. You know, that's cool with me. Um, it's not so much in your face, you know, and that's cool. And the bigger problem with it is for me, I ride a bicycle. And I, I use a backpack. I used to use a back. Well, I do sometimes now. I, I wear a backpack sometimes. When you walk into a bar or somewhere with a backpack on, people look at you. And I didn't notice it before, you know, because I'm oblivious to all that. But then somebody mentioned it to me. Like, oh, yeah, when I saw you walk in with that backpack, I was a little on edge. And I was like, really? Really? A backpack? Like, what am I going to do? Blow, blow shit up? Am I going to start swinging katanas out of it? What am I going to do with a backpack? You know what I carry in it? Work clothes, maybe a Kindle so I can read, um, keys. Basically, if I got pulled over and off said, I need to see what's in your backpack, I'd have nothing to hide. Although I'd want a warrant just for purposes sake, you know, which just, just because, you know, but I really have nothing in there that's like of any anything to worry about so um so yeah that kind of threw, threw me off when somebody said that and then like now it's like a month later and the thing is this was the first person to actually say it other people had thought it probably but i i've been i'm oblivious to that kind of thing because i really don't care what people think for the most part well except now it's just the whole now with the whole gun thing in texas where people are just well i'm gonna walk around with an ak-47 why why would you, why do you need to walk around with an AK-47? Or maybe it was an M16. I'm not really a gun aficionado. I would like to learn to shoot a gun, but I mean, just because. <clears throat> just because it's on the bucket list with scuba diving, and I did skydiving once before, which I'll talk about that someday. 
So, this is good beer. It's really refreshing. So anyway, there's that. Speaking of guns, um, let's go to Oregon. Um, Oregon seems like an interesting place. Um, I picture a lot of rain and a lot of lumberjacks. That's all I could think of when I think of Oregon. It's just lumberjacks and trees and rain. And uh, Portlandia. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, Portlandia. So, um... So in Oregon, uh, I guess there's a militia group that took over a federal reserve land area. And uh, one side of the story is that um, these are terrorists. If they were any other color, they would be shot down immediately. So that's one side of the story. The other side of the story is that this is a peaceful prote protest against uh, uh, people that were arrested wrongfully for protecting their own land from federal the federal government trying to uh, take more land from uh, free American patriots or whatever. So those are the two sides of the argument. Um, so <coughs> and this is why I haven't started the podcast yet. Somewhere in the middle, I think there is the truth of the reality of the whole situation. And I also think that some of the people on that side, um, the news is going to uh, project this in two different lights, depending on who, you, who you're watching. If you're watching Fox News, these people are patriots. But uh, I know that Clive and Bundy, Bundy uh, he was the, the one from earlier in Nevada with the, the rancher. Um, his sons injected themselves into the situation. So... I, I know that much. Um, to where this is going to lead going into 2016, I don't know. And I, I do know that from, from one of the crazy, the right-wing sources I've looked into, well, I don't know. They're not really right-wing, more conspiratory. I, I was looking for InfoWars, okay? I'm not going to say right-wing because back when Bush was, was present, they would have been considered left-wing. So there's that. Um, Looking, there's that fear that um, the government's going to take our guns away. It is being promoted and propagated, and I don't think that's going to happen. Um, it's just, it's not going to happen. So I know that. Just, it's just, no, it's not going to happen. But it's, it's something that's being manipulated by, by politicians because it'll get votes because they are afraid that the guns are being taken away. It's up there with abortion as one of those those topics, uh, hot button issues where it's like, okay, well, we're gonna get we're we're both gonna uh, give bail out the the big corporations, but I'm against abortion and they're for abortion, and that's the same way with the guns issue. Like they're gonna take our guns away, and but they're but they're not. You know, none of that's gonna happen. So that's the whole manipulation game that goes on forever and ever, and it goes on throughout our history of just like, okay, well, we're going to manipulate the masses on this weird topic, you know, like guns. Guns is the, the, the issue of the day. But meanwhile, um, there's going to be more shootings this year, as there were last year, and we're going to see it on the news weekly. So, uh, yeah, get, get used to that. Uh, interesting, though, is that I don't expect Texas to be one of those states where you're going to see a lot of shootings for some reason. I don't know. Um, and it's not not because, uh, oh, because we, we have all the guns and no one's going to go on a shooting spree because they know they're going to get shot immediately. It's not that. I think it has something to do with the pharmaceutical industry. And now I'll get into that. Another. Actually, I've gotten into that before. Check one of my prior videos. You'll see what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, it's a good beer. Yeah. Um, other than that, yeah. So I'm going to post this right now because I think I've kind of said my 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 piece on all this, you know, covering everything. Um, I'm in the middle on it all. I don't think they're completely in the wrong, but I think that. Uh, both sides of the media are going to ma manipulate it for their own agenda. That That's a fact. And no matter how you look at it. And one side's going to say they're terrorists. One side's going to say they're patriots. 
and that's for you to decide uh, what you think. So hopefully this doesn't lead to a civil war. I don't think it will, but that's probably what they said when Fort Sumner happened. Like, I don't think this is going to lead to anything. It's just a bunch of crazies taking over. It'll be perfectly fine. Civil war begins. So, um, but I, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, there, there isn't, um, there, there isn't enough of a, there isn't a Mason Dixon line. Let's just say. Yeah, it's like people are disagreeing amongst themselves. But meanwhile, the news hasn't reported much about this, but I think, uh, and I'm, I'm trying to look into this more, AIG, uh, the, Hank Greenberg, who was former CEO of uh, AIG before the bailouts, who was a top shareholder, I think he may have won a lawsuit against the uh, uh, U.S. government because he felt the... Uh, the bailouts were unfair to him. Yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> digest that as much as you want. Um, you, you get angry as much as you want. Um, I don't blame you because uh, he got bailed out. He probably, but he probably had money on the other side, like betting that the he he probably had his bet hedged. Let's just say. Um, so he would have made out either way, and I think he probably might have made out even better if the bailout never happened. I think that's why he was angry. So, other than that, you know, uh, thanks for stopping by. Uh, this is the Recluse Cast, and there will be more to come. Um, check me out on Facebook, Twitter, and here. And my, uh, you know, it'll be in the credits. I'm out. Peace.